Hey friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Simon Hurley Create video. Let's go ahead and jump right into the products we're using for our video today. I have the brand new Trick or Treat stamp set. I just think this is so adorable where you've got a little catacorn and a weenie dog as a little weenie. <laughs> we also have a little bit of two-step stamping here so you can do the candy and one of the pumpkins. There's lots of great sentiments and then you've got uh, lots of other images to use. We're also going to be using the ghosted stencil. I think that's so cute. I feel like you could use that just as the stencil itself. Maybe even put some googly eyes over the top of some of those. We've got some Simon Hurley Create Stark Bite cardstock and I went ahead and stamped out all of my images. The um, sentiment I used I went ahead and heat embossed with some clear embossing ink and uh, and some embossing powder just so that those would stand out a little bit more so let's go ahead and jump into our coloring we're gonna color our bear first a little mummy is probably one of the easiest things you could probably color because there isn't a lot you need to do so I'm gonna use I'll put the colors up on the screen we've got some E99 and some well I covered up the other one but I think I'll bring that one out uh, I believe that's E35 maybe and then we'll blend those out for I'll bring it back in for his paws and even his ears eventually there's just so much of the wrap around him that I kind of missed those spots at first so we'll bring in that for his little paws um, and his ears and then we'll bring in the red for his mouth and then I'm going to bring in some warm tones we've got W3 I thought about originally starting to do each of the little pieces of wrap and where that might end up being and then on the sides I decided I would just feather it out to make it look like he's a little bit more rounded. Uh, some areas I do, I'm a little bit more detailed I guess, and then to blend that out I'm going to bring in my W1 and blend that out just a little bit more. Now we'll move on to coloring our little ballerina. I'm going to start with some E00, but looking at her cute little costume, it reminds me of when I was a child. Uh, I grew up in Nebraska, I've said that before, and you know October 31st is obviously quite late in the year, so you could most likely have a winter storm by that point, or well it is Nebraska so maybe it's 106 out, you never know. Uh, traditionally it seemed like we always had some sort of snow, so you always had to prepare when you bought your costume to make sure that it fit over a snowsuit. I remember a couple times actually even having Halloween canceled or postponed just simply because we had a blizzard. <laughs> Good times. Uh, but yeah. So I'm just going to move on to coloring her little wings. And those are pretty detailed. So I didn't bring in a second color there. And for the purple, I'm just going to bring in the V17 all around those bits. I am being very cautious and just using the very very tip of my brush tip marker on my Copic because it's a very small area in there and I don't want the, that to cover up too much of that pink but I'll tell you one of my favorite things about Halloween is always seeing the little kiddos in their costumes so I am anxious to see how that goes this year I'll bring in some E99 for her hair I actually think I meant to go a little bit lighter but I grabbed that by mistake and so then we'll bring in some E37 for the darker shade and then a little bit of yellow. For this little guy we're going to bring in some E39 for our first color and it's adorable that he's a little robot. It reminds me of when my son would bring out like his duct tape. He did a lot with duct tape. I think he even made a duct tape backpack at one point. He was like really good with the duct tape. And I'm sure, he, I think he made a chair once too with cardboard and a bunch of duct tape. <laughs> ah, creative kids. So yeah, this reminds me of like making a little costume with a box or something like that. One of my favorite costumes was actually uh, my mom made an, a high C costume for me using some felt. And she even made this little like headband straw for me. So I had a, a paper towel roll, I think, attached to the the. The headband it was so cute I loved that costume so much and that year my sister was a pack of M&Ms we were just like the envy of all the kids around <laughs> super fun all right so as you saw I just brought in some of those W's again and then I'm going to bring in just one shade for each of the colors there some Y35 and then we'll also bring in that gray back again for the upper portion of our little robots headgear for the pumpkins, we're going to color those all the same with some YR14, and then we'll bring in some YR18 just for some shading and shadowing. Everybody's got to have a candy bucket, right? 
and then we are going to fussy cut each of those images out, which I don't mind doing. So I'll even fussy cut out the sentiments and then we'll set those off to the side because we're going to start working on our backgrounds, which you know I love to make a background. So I have some more of that stark white cardstock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that'll be the whole front of an A2 size card. I used a magic powder bag over the top and then I'm going to use my Nouveau brush to sweep away any excess powder. I did tack down my piece using a small piece of washi tape on the back and then I'm going to tack down my stencil using some more purple tape and then I'm going to take my embossing ink straight to the stencil. I'm going to push that right through to those little ghosts. I didn't do the best job of this one, but the other two end up turning out because I'm going to do the same thing for all three. And then we're going to cover that with some clear embossing powder. Uh, you could use white if you wanted to, but this is a stark white cardstock, so I knew that the clear would work fine as well. So then I'm going to heat set that until that is smooth and melted, and you'll be able to tell because it'll go from a matte finish to a shiny finish. And I won't bore you with that because you really can't see much on screen that way, but I'm going to end up doing all three backgrounds the exact same way. And when they're all, those are all done, we'll bring in our colors for some ink blending. This first one is some Remember Me, and I'm going to use an Ergo brush to uh, do my blending. I want that Remember Me ink to be all over that background. We're going to do a two color blend. And yeah, in, you know, when you first do this over that clear embossing powder, even if you did it over white, it's gonna show up over your embossing and that can be a little bit frustrating, but that'll all rub away later. One of the things I love about the Simon Hurley inks is how well they blend on top of each other. And so what I did is I started with the Remember Me and I'm gonna use the same brush just because it's I'm going to a darker color, not going lighter, so it won't contaminate too much so then I'm bringing in the midnight snack which is that dark navy blue and I love it and you can stack these on top of each other so beautifully and I can even make that midnight snack even darker if I want to and then when I'm happy with the blend it's like this beautiful ombre we're going to just bring in our microfiber cloth to clean up our mess on our glass mat and then we'll buff away the color over our ghosts. So they look a little dingy right now, but then we can buff that color away and they'll be a little bit brighter white. Like I said, this one I didn't do the best job of the embossing ink, but you get the gist and I'm gonna cover some of that. So then we'll move on to the next one. You'll notice that I did use some purple tape on my fingers just so that I wouldn't spread the ink too far all over or just get it on my hands. I have a tendency to just get real messy when I'm doing backgrounds or anything else. And so I was trying to minimize how much ink I would have all over my fingers. I did switch brushes. I have three of these big brushes like this. And so uh, you, you could clean them in between. It just takes a little bit of time. And then to really clean them, I, have a, I will use some, um, it's like a spray, get them a little bit wet, and then clean those off. And then you got to let that dry. So those two colors were the Triple Berry and Crown Me. And I love how Crown Me just blends so beautifully over the top of the triple berry. That background is gorgeous. Love that. And then our final background is going to be using some greens. So I've grabbed another brush and then we're going to start with some overzealous. This is just a beautiful lime green. Sorry my camera kind of goes in and out. It freaks out whenever I'm doing ink blending for some reason. I must be moving too fast for it. Um, but yeah, so then we'll bring that in, kind of intensify that overzealous there in the middle so that it's even more ombre. And then we're going to bring in the fake plant at the very bottom. And I love how these blend together as well. They're just so pretty. It would not hurt my feelings if Simon Hurley came out with even more ink colors because I love, love, love his color line. His ink line is just fabulous. All right, and once again, we'll buff away the excess color off of those embossed images and they just pop. I love it. And then there's all three of them together. Now we're going to start actually preparing our card bases. So I've cut down some more stark white cardstock to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored it at four and a quarter inches. These will be side folding A2 size cards. And then I'm going to do the insides all the same. I've pulled out one of the sentiments and some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And you see I screwed that up. Uh, but the beauty of a clear stamp is that sometimes you can line it right up again. And I was able to do that just fine with that first one. And I'll stamp all three the same way. And then I'm going to bring in the bat. There are, I think, two or three bats on this. But I'm just going to bring in two. So I'm going to stamp those all the same. And then I want to do a little bit more stamping on the inside. So I'm going to bring in the pumpkin that's like a two-step stamp. So I'll stamp the first part with some traffic cone. 
and that's the solid image and then I'm going to flip it over and do the lined image on the outside of it. This one I, do, I get a little off center but I actually like that. And then we'll do it for the other two as well, stamping with traffic cone and then stamping our Versafine Clara right over the top of it. And I just think that's so fun. And now I want to do a sentiment on the outside. So I have some paper trimmed down. And for this first one, I'm going to use some Remember Me ink. I'm going to stamp Trick or Treat on the outside edges. Again, sorry, my camera's kind of freaking out. And then I'm going to stamp Trick or Treat using that Versafine Clara Nocturne ink right down there in the center. And then we're going to do some uh, a couple more and those are going to be to match the other backgrounds so I'll clean off my stamp really well for this next one I'll bring in the overzealous because that one's going to go on our green background and then we'll clean it off again and we'll bring in the triple berry so I just picked the lightest color of all three of those backgrounds to stamp our sentiments and then we'll get ready to actually start assembling my Quality control is going to come in here in a second because he wants to see what's going on. This is Miles, very interested, and he's going to get really involved here in a second. So I'll, t I'll tack down all of my sentiments using some liquid glue, and then I want to use some action wobblers on these because I just think that would be so much fun. So I have three action wobblers. You're going to peel off the back of one of them if you've never used them, and I'll have them linked down below, and then you'll peel off the backing of the other. But before I attach that, I'm going to attach my card panel to my card base, just using that liquid glue. And it covers the whole front of that A2 size card. And then you're going to just adhere down your action wobbler. These things are awesome because they will mail flat. So they're totally flat when you stick them through the mail, but then they pop up and you can just kind of play with them. And I need quality control to come over here and take a look. He's very interested in how that works. <laughs> I love it. He's so cute. And he'll check it out and like, all right, let me see if I can do it. I had to leave this in here. You know I did. And boom, he does it. What a cutie. So much fun. All right, and then we'll do our other two. I have to give them their little buckets, so I'm going to attach just a little bit of glue to that and then push him down so that he's holding his little bucket. And then the other two will be the exact same but I love the vibrant colors. I love how these turned out so much fun. <laughs> and I love that Miles got a chance to play with them. <laughs> so there you have it. Three fun little trick or treat cards with some action to them. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Everything I use will be linked down below if you're interested in checking those out. I appreciate all the love and support you guys give. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye, everybody.